In this episode of Law Gear, we will take a look at one of the core weapons of choice for the Imperium of Man's superhuman soldiers, the Astartes, or Space Marines. It's also used by the female warriors of the Imperial Ecclesiarchy, the Adeptus Sororitas, the Bolt Weapons. Now these are the relatively standard issue tools of the Imperium's finest, although many Marines can carry specific patterns or adaptations. For both the Astartes and the Sororitas, they are more than just a weapon, but actually a holy symbol of the Emperor of Man's wrath to be wrought upon the enemies of the Imperium. Bolters to many Astartes are divine weapons. They signify mankind's total supremacy over the filthy Xenos that they must continually crush and eradicate. Because of their status as weapons in the Imperium, any ordinary human who were to be found in possession of even a single Astartes bolt round, let alone a weapon itself, would expect to suffer severe punishment. Bolt weapons come in a large quantity of variations and patterns and can also be scaled down to a pistol or scaled up as a heavy weapon. It may also be combined with other weapons to create dual platforms of say Bolter and Flamer or Bolter and Melter. And there are also other iterations such as the Storm Bolter, often used by Space Marines wearing sacred Terminator armor. There are other variants which are even found on Titans or super heavy tanks like the devastating Vulcan Mega Bolter. Standard bolt guns for a self-propelling explosive bolt which will ignite as it leaves the weapon and is then designed to penetrate and detonate, essentially blowing its target apart from the inside out. It's a common misunderstanding to confuse these weapons with the more crude early history projectile weapons as they look and operated similarly, but the size of the rounds and the devastating power of them far exceeds comparatively crude weapons of prehistory. A standard bolt gun magazine can contain 20 or 30 rounds and the weapons operate with a semi-automatic or 3 round burst operation. Bolt guns will make a literal roar when fired and their sound is deafening. And this is caused by the propellant in the bolt shells igniting as they leave the weapon. This is then followed through by the detonation on reaching target. These bolts are also used in fully automatic weapons such as assault cannons which you usually see wielded only by terminators or dreadnoughts. A standard bolt has a diamantine tip with a depleted deuterium core. Diamantine is a composite ceramic material used by the Imperium to fabricate weapons, ammunition, even armour. And diamantine is taken to meaning resembling a diamond molecular structure and is more probably an industrialised product used in this composite. Now bolt weapons are constructed by the Adeptus Mechanicus or Space Marine forges. They're designed to be utilised not by ordinary humans but by the adapted superhuman forces of the Imperium. The weight of a standard bolt weapon would require supportive bracing for any ordinary human and be generally impractical. Not to mention the severe recoil which would be far too heavy for most humans and likely cause severe damage, even possibly breaking or dislocating limbs. Bolt weapons are of course used by Imperial Guard when mounted on vehicles or static support platforms. Pistol variants though are utilised by some Imperial Guard, usually only officers. Now there are at least 21 patterns utilised by the Astartes, 3 by the Sororitas and then various others by Mechanicus and other human factions. And as with most things in the 41st millennium, adaptation and loss schematics make the numbers always unreliable and open to change. Some bolt guns are famous enough to be named like Rogal Dawn's tactical bolter, the Voice of Terror. Dawn the Imperial Fist's Primarch had this presented to him by the Adeptus Custodes honouring him on his appointment as Praetorian of Terror. Others such as the Executioner's Voice are ancient relics and this artificer bolt gun was created before the Horus Heresy wielded by a Dark Angel's Librarian. But this weapon along with the Librarian was lost in the warp became fused into a space hulk known as Olethros. It would later be discovered by a team of the Adeptus Mechanicus, but then lost again as their ship would become also fused into this Space Hulk. It would finally be retrieved by the Dark Angels Astartes when they would then discover this ancient relic weapon, along also with its STC pattern. More recent updates to the bolt include the Mark II Call Pattern Bolt Rifle. This version was produced during the latter period of the 41st millennium for the Primaris Space Marines and named after Majos Belisarius Call, this bolter is said to have been recrafted 
and re-engineered to near perfection of standards. Now, there are a great many specific patterns of bolt gun, but a few of these include the Avenger Mega Bolter. Now think of an A10's 30mm cannon and you're on the right track, but scale it up. The Avenger Mega Bolter is a devastating rapid fire weapon and is mounted on strike aircraft and space marine fire raptors. A smaller single version of the Vulcan Mega Bolter, this five barreled electronically fired rotary weapon can devastate ground and air targets with ease. The Heavy Bolter is a much heavier variation of a bolt gun. It's essentially a support weapon and it uses a much higher caliber of round. It features a high fire rate as well and minimal maintenance requirements. It can operate as a static weapon for Imperial Guard mounted on tanks and armor, but it's also carried by Space Marine Devastator units. Standard bolters still use a firing pin mechanism, but the heavy bolter uses an electronic pulse to maintain high rates of automatic fire. Space Marines and even Sororitas can brace wield a heavy bolter and fire from the hip when using also an ammo feed backpack. The weapon is then aimed via a HUD and integrated laser pointer system. The Godwin pattern bolter remains the current most common pattern for Imperial Space Marines. It has a built-in ammo counter, a sickle-shaped magazine carrying 30 rounds and firing a standard 75 caliber bolt and depleted deuterium core. This bolter typically fires in bursts of four rounds and has a genetic palm print reader as well. It also has an internal targeter linked to the Marine's helmet for improved accuracy. The Phobos pattern R017 was associated with Mark II Crusade armor. It's the most venerable design of bolter used by the Astartes and this carried a 70 caliber round, not the more standard 75 used in the modern bolters. Most of the Phobos pattern bolt guns were fabricated on Mars at the beginning of the Imperium. Relic bolt guns are extremely rare and are believed to have been used by the Emperor's warriors during the earliest days of the Imperium and they bear an eagle's claw and thunderbolt symbols. These are considered holy relics imbued with the literal wrath of the Emperor. Stalker bolters are standard bolt guns but have a longer barrel and longer range optic. They are essentially more reminiscent of a battle rifle or a marksman weapon. There are then further iterations of the weapons that are more customized for the user or specific unit in its deployment. Storm bolters are double barreled iterations of standard bolt guns and are much heavier weapons. It's often mounted atop Imperial tanks also in a turret gunning weapon and Terminator Marines because of their limited manual dexterity usually will carry box magazines with anything like 150 rounds in them. When not being used by a Terminator the magazine is probably going to be smaller like a 60 round variation. Its ammunition though remains the same as standard bolt guns and this weapon fires twin rounds giving the user between 30 and 75 shots. The Tigris pattern bolter was discovered on Forge World Tigris before the Horus Heresy and it carries a 60 caliber bolt. The STC design for this weapon has now since been lost but some Tigris pattern bolt guns continue to exist in the Imperium and as with any relics unable to be replicated they are revered by their users. The Vulcan Mega Bolter is a devastating dual iteration of the Avenger Mega Bolter. It's twice as nasty for its enemies and its immense rate of fire makes it a horrific anti-infantry or anti-vehicle weapon. If anything is left alive after the firing stops, the chances are that all that will remain are carbonized fragments of its target. These are usually mounted only upon Titans. In addition to its varying ammunition, bolters have a variety of different magazine types. The standard sickle magazine is what's seen on most bolt guns and is just stock, typically carrying between 20 and 30 rounds. Straight magazines do exist, but they're not so commonly used now and generally hold less ammo, something like 10 to 20 bolts. You might see these on the likes of stalker bolters or heavy bolt pistols. Drum magazines are less common again and are known to be fairly unreliable. They compensate with a capacity of 40, 60 or 100 bolt rounds and they're known to jam, which consequently is problematic given the danger of many enemies facing the Imperium. A jam often is going to mean death, but the trade-off is considered acceptable. These are frequently seen on storm bolters used by Terminators. 
Belt feeds tend to suggest use on a static weapon like a machine gun, but actually they're used on older bolt guns as well, used by the traitorous Chaos Space Marines. Because of the problems in the nature of using these belt feeds, these fell out of fashion long ago in the standard Imperial Space Marines and are no longer used. The G Plus X is a magazine popular with planetary law enforcement or hive gangs. It basically takes two magazines which are attached by tape or cloth and essentially into an improvised means of fast reloading. This is not produced by the Imperium for standard issue. It's worth pointing out that some bolters are designed to be used by unaugmented humans like the lock patterns which are specifically designed for use like arbites, people who require more stopping power of a weapon because they work in dangerous environments like a hive city. And this is where that kind of ammunition magazine might occur. Many situations have arisen over the centuries that have required specialised ammunition for Imperial bolt weapons. Now standard bolts, as previously described, are 75 calibre and utilise a depleted deuterium core and a diamantine tip. But there are many other rounds. Anti-phasic shells are used by Death Watch kill teams specifically in relation to Necrons. They were developed to try and prevent Necrons from phasing out and then returning to their tombs, the goal being to ensure that when they kill a Necron, they stay dead. Bane strike rounds are shells developed secretly by the Alpha Legion during the Great Crusade, and these rounds used by the traitors to the Imperium were designed to specifically breach Space Marine power armour, and were first used at the drop site massacre where devastating losses would be inflicted to the Iron Hands, Raven Guard and Salamanders. Bloodshard shells are utilised by the Blood Angels in their Angelus bolt guns and these contain a payload of razor filament, a very effective against armour. Dragon fire bolts are used by Stern Guard veteran marines and they release a superheated gas that makes enemies using cover essentially worthless. They're designed to inflict maximum damage for each round against targets even in heavy cover. Hellfire rounds were designed to specifically combat Tyranids and fill the core and tip of each round with a mutagenic acid as well as thousands of needles which upon firing into a target's flesh will pump the acid into that target. They do have equally an unpleasant effect on all organic targets. Inferno bolts are also pretty unpleasant, they're designed to inflict immolation on their targets and carbonise them with superheated chemical fire. The standard deuterium core of a bolt round is replaced with an oxyphosphorus gel known as Prometheum. This is also used in Imperial Flamer weapons and the gel ignites on contact with oxygen. It's similar to napalm in that it sticks to an individual, continuing to burn on its own and often immolate them from the inside out. Kraken penetrator rounds are heavy duty armour piercing rounds where the deuterium this time is being replaced with a solid adamantine core and a heavy primary charge. Upon impact, the casing will peel and the adamantine needle accelerates into its target where the larger detonator propels this metal to be especially effective against heavily armoured infantry. Metal Storm frag shells are a cluster ammunition and they detonate prior to impact on the enemy, spray a storm of shrapnel over the target, usually with horrifically shredding consequences if they're not heavily armoured. This might be used well against, say, orcs. Psycannon bolt rounds are used by the Ordo Malleus and the Grey Knights and have significant damage properties versus psychic and demonic targets, where normal rounds would do very little damage to these ethereal creatures. Scorpius bolts were handcrafted by tech marines during the Great Crusade and subsequent heresy. They contain a two-stage warhead with a micro-guidance and needle-like sabo dart which vaporised when striking an armoured target, thus giving it improved armour penetration. These rounds would have to though be hand-loaded before firing and so are generally pretty impractical. Stalker silence shells are somewhat similar to subsonic rounds and are meant for covert fighting. This is usually combined with a gas cartridge replacing the propellant base for silent firing. Tempest bolts utilise plasma shock generators that emit electromagnetic and thermal radiation when the shell detonates. These Tempest shells are best used against, say, mechanical targets. Vengeance rounds are created using an unstable flux core tech, which makes them extremely hazardous to use, but also extremely effective in penetrating armoured targets. And they were designed specifically to wreak vengeance against traitors to the Imperium, notably the Chaos Space Marines. They're comparable to the Bane Strike rounds of the Alpha Legion. But then you also have something called Stable Flux Core Bolts, which are similar to these Vengeance rounds. They were discovered in 992 of Millennium 41, and the STC for these design bolt rounds are capable of melting ceramite 
as I say, similar to Vengeance rounds, but without the unstable, dangerous nature of them. The bolt gun has been the standardized armament for the Astartes for as long as the Imperium has existed, but back in the earliest days of the Imperium, they also used another type of weapon known as a Volkite Caliber, and these were ancient weapons from the Dark Age of Technology, and proved so complex that they were unable to be mass produced. They were a thermal ray weapon and presented considerable firepower for their size as well as being easier to handle than modern bolt weapons. Volkite weapons could penetrate thick ceramite with one concentrated beam shot, and it had an obviously devastating effect on organic matter as well. Throughout the Great Crusade and into the period of heresy, these weapons fell out of favour for the more standardised bolt weapons, but some remain in service even though they are exceedingly rare, almost legendary in status. One of the most notable users of Volkite weapons was the Primarch of the Traitorous Legion, the Emperor's Children, who used a master-crafted Volkite Charger, which was named Firebrand. The bolt gun, despite its standardised nature, is a treasured weapon, a divine tool of the Emperor of Man and bringer of death to the enemies of the Imperium. As the primary weapon of the Astartes, its construction demands exacting standards and is only produced by the finest materials of skilled artisans. Even the ammunition for bolters can't be easily manufactured outside of specifically specialised fabricators. To a space marine, the bolt gun is an extension of their self and duty. They regularly will perform rituals as part of this maintenance to keep its machine spirit in symbiosis with its user. Very much in a sense, the Astartes are one and the same with their bolt weapons. To see them without this defining tool seems a travesty in itself, and they go beyond being a simple projectile weapon. They are the tools of the Emperor's wrath, meeting out fiery justice to the enemies of mankind and the Imperium. For many warriors of the Imperium, the spirit and meaning behind the weapons surpass their combat effectiveness. And this is the most important context to take away from the weapon itself. A las gun used by a guardsman can be stripped, cleaned, and a quick prayer mumbled to it. But a bolt weapon is an extension of the Emperor's will, it is not simply a gun, it is the strength of the Imperium, the messenger of death, and the spirit of the Imperial cult. Venerated and feared by the enemies of mankind, the bolt gun is a symbol of strength, power, and the Imperium of mankind itself. <laughs>